at him from a distance and killed him that way. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn. Okay. Damn. Then, <laughs> put, these, put these Bulgarians on a friggin' baseball team. You know what I mean? It's got to suck to die that way. Mm. So the most common belief on how Botnys was killed is that he had a spear ran through his ass. Now, not literally through his ass, but, you know, through his body, and it killed him. I thought he was pulling some, like, Dracula shit going on. So, word of Botnith's death got back to Basil, and he was pissed off and sad at the same time. He was like, you kill him, God damn it, I don't even live anymore. Pretty sure it was something like that. But then he got angry. Basil wanted revenge. He wanted the Bulgarians to feel how he felt. So just like Dan said, he gathered up these 15,000 Bulgarian prisoners. But there was something you left out, Dan. Something that makes this completely more messed up than just blinding all 15,000 of them. What he did is he divided the men into groups of 100. He then had 99 men in each group completely blinded. And then he left one man in each group with only one eye. So he blinded one of their eyes and left them with one good seeing eye. And he did this so that that one man could lead the other 99 men in their group back home. That is sad. Could you imagine that? Oh my gosh. 15,000 prisoners in groups of 100 and only leaving like one per each group to lead them that's half blind. Wow. That's insane. Now, the question is, would you rather be the fully blinded one or would you rather be the half blinded one responsible for all 99 blind men? I mean, I'd rather be able to see, but that is a lot of responsibility. Yeah. I'd rather be the half blinded man. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so there you go. That's a little history knowledge nugget for you. So let's get back to the story. All right. So the Bulgarian army's chief of defense, Rajnu Menchev, wanted to meet with a psychic medium. He ended up meeting with Elisaveta Lojanova. She was a medium who had said that she had been in contact with aliens using telepathic means, and during that meeting is when we believe that Menchev learned about the treasure of Tsar Samuel. Menchev believed Lojanova, and that was when he sent his troops to Saracina to set up a camp there and to prepare to start excavating. Now, this Loganova not only told this Menchev guy, you know, the chief of defense, the Bulgarian chief of defense, about this treasure of Tsar. She also told him information about the universe, medicine, how to travel through space-time, and a lot of other things. So she pretty much went ham on him. Said, oh yeah, you want to know some stuff? Well, here's how to travel through space-time. He's like, well, okay, well, I believe you. I'm going to send all my troops to go dig a hole. So this medium was able to locate the area they were to start digging in, in Saracina. But it wasn't for the treasure of Sar Samuel anymore. The objective changed. So since Laganova was, you know, a medium, whenever she got there and said, hey, this is where you need to, wait, 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 I'm getting telepathic communications from something in the area. Something's communicating with me. It is a living being that was buried here. So supposedly, that's when the objective changed from digging for treasure to now entity that was communicating telepathically that was supposedly buried here. Now, based on supposedly leaked information from a Colonel Zvetko Kenev, who was part of the Army dig team there, he said that they started digging on December 6, 1990. They kept digging until the team reached a strange spiral tunnel and discovered a mysterious rectangular slab made of an unknown material that they could not explain. That is when they brought in Lojanova to help again with her medium abilities to help figure out what the tunnel was leading to and figure out what this rectangular slab was. So this Lojanova chick was just chilling, right? And she got a call and said, hey, we need you here. We found something. She was like, okay, I'm on my way. So she arrived at the dig site and she started to look at this weird object, this rectangular mysterious slab made of unknown material. And they were like, what is it? And she said, hold on. 
and she placed her fingers up to her head and looked down at it and closed her eyes. And then she looked back up and said, this is a biological protection slab. You all need to be careful. It's covered in dangerous bacteria and it shouldn't be disturbed. And then everybody was kind of like in shock and there was a guy in the corner who was like, I, I don't fucking use my hands to lift this up out of the ground. What the hell am I supposed to do? And then she said, wait, wait, shh. Told everyone to be quiet. And then she said, there's something deep in this tunnel. I can hear it again. And it's, it's sending me telepathic messages. So the Bulgarian military was like, holy shit, what do we do about this? So they decided to reach out to somebody because they kind of wanted to verify it, right? They thought, eh, they're kind of skeptical about this Loganova chick, which I don't blame them. Now, do you want to take a guess at who the Bulgarian military reached out to? Who? Baba Vanga. Oh, Baba Vanga. We have done a episode over her. And if you haven't listened to it, go take a listen. It's a great episode, okay? So this Baba Vanga is pretty much like a real famous psychic prediction lady who was blind. So the Bulgarian military reached out to her and they said, hey, we got this chick that's saying that there's something sending telepathic messages upwards out of this tunnel. We found this weird protection slab. Can you tell us what the hell is down there deep in this tunnel that we're digging? Well, Baba Vanga had said the same exact thing that Lojanova said. There is something very deep in the tunnel that is sending telepathic messages up toward the surface. But knowing all of this, the military decided to keep going further into the tunnel, which the tunnel ended up having smooth walls and It was built by someone or something that knew what it was doing, which as they continued on, they stumbled upon some more odd things, like another slab that was in the form of a concave lens, then an image on a stone of a tall humanoid figure, which was described as being taller than a human being. So at this point, the Bulgarian military said, we're going to keep digging. And they kept on. And as they continued digging, they started to notice that the walls and the floor started to become more smoother. And the floor started to give off a silvery look to it. Sort of like it was kind of shining. Which is kind of weird. So they were like, let's continue on. So the further they went digging into the tunnel, they started to discover that the walls started to have unusual hieroglyphs on them, which if you don't know what that is, just basic drawings, right? They had some drawings and shit on them. So after finding those drawings and shit on the walls, the military reached a point to where, you know, we can't go any further. And it's because they supposedly reached the giant protection plate. And right before that, they seemed to have discovered what they said was an invisible force field that had a very bright beam of light that sort of didn't allow them to proceed any further. Like they were trying to dig through it and they're like, I can't get past this invisible barrier of light. And they're yelling at each other and like, what the hell is it? And that chick medium up top with her fingers on her head saying, I told you so. So yeah, it was crazy back then. I told you, there's something there. Now, we do have some photos that we were able to find with some of the passages and how it looked, but they are in like black and white and so they're not the greatest photos but we will link those up, which I mean, honestly, the first picture is a really good picture, just black and white, but you can tell like part of the tunnel that they dug there. Then the second one is actually the entrance into the hole. So it wasn't like they just went into like a side of a mountain. They actually dug straight down to start it off and then it went into like a spiral, like stairwell. So they actually had to go down that ladder to go any further. Okay. But yeah, in the third picture we have here, the top part of it that's actually the tent that goes over the hole that they go down into so they had the entire population of that freaking small village leave just so they could set up a small ass tent and dig down i was imagining this as like a giant hole no how the hell did you find these pictures i did a lot of sleuthing okay i went to places that i don't even want to talk about all right i won't ask any more questions you do it for the show you do it for the show but yeah, and then like the bottom part of the third picture, I'm guessing it's describing like how some of the walls looked inside, which I don't have photos of where the smooth walls and stuff, and then like the silvery floors, but I'm guessing this is what it, the designs of it looked like, kind of. It's quite interesting. I think I would get claustrophobic. Oh, 
Absolutely. I can't do those cave exploring things, you know, where people go cave diving, I guess you call it. I don't even know if you call it diving. Cave exploring? Yeah, cave exploring. I've seen some where people had to enter in such a small hole that they had to suck in. Oh, yeah. Slide through. It's like, what if you keep sliding and you get stuck and you can't breathe? Like, I, I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't either. I would be too afraid to get stuck and then that's it. That's where I die. Kind of like that one kid who was uh, exploring that peanut butter hole or what is it called? Peanut butter cave death. Uh, oh, it was Nutty Putty. That was close. Peanut butter, Nutty Putty, same thing. Nutty Putty. Kid named uh, John Edward Jones was exploring the Nutty Putty cave. Ended up getting stuck there. Bunch of people came and tried to help, and they got like crews to try to rig stuff up. And uh, they were like, fuck it, we can't get him out. And he ended up dying of a cardiac arrest after being stuck there. Pretty much upside down, too. Like he was going downwards and he got stuck. I think it was like for more than a day he was stuck like that. And he ended up uh, dying and they couldn't retrieve his body or anything. So they just kind of closed up the nutty putty cave and nobody else can go in it. So his body is stuck there forever. That sucks. Yeah, no thank you. That's why I'm not doing any uh, cave exploring or anything. That better be a well-opened cave for me to go in. Yeah, better be 12 feet by 12 feet. Something like inner space caverns. That's right. At least that. Yeah. All right. So let's get back onto the story. Okay. So if you want to see those pictures, of course, we'll have them posted up on Patreon. So in the story, we're at the part where the military was digging and they had come across some type of invisible force field with a very bright beam of light and it wouldn't let them pass any further. And the military had no idea what to do. So they were like, hey, let's give our main chick, Baba Vanga, a call. And then this Logan Nova chick was there and she's like, hey, why are you calling up her? You could have just asked me. And they were like, uh, no, nah, we like Baba Vanga better because she had a higher rate of being correct, somewhere around 80%. Logan Nova was like, eh, okay, I get that. Anyways, they got on the phone with Vanga and said, hey, we got this invisible force field. What the hell is it? Vanga was like, hey, that cave is pretty much under protection from something. And everything below that force field and past it is not.